continue. So now we're gonna call our fifth speaker here is Hassan. Sai Hassan is the head to be director of Migrant Workers Alliance for Change and WAC. It's a workers' organization that supports and takes action with migrant farm workers, care workers, current and former international students, and undocumented people to win worker and immigration justice. Please make some some Hassan! How are we all doing? I want to begin by acknowledging that we are on the lands of the Haudenosaunee people. Yeah. Territories that have been taken care of by the Wendat Nation and the Mississaugas of the river for centuries. Yeah. And so we come here as migrants not to be part of the ongoing theft of indigenous land, but to be here in solidarity. We are here to talk about spring, but I am thinking of shadows. For the last 160 days, we have seen bombs fall on Gaza. We have seen children Buried in the rubble, we have seen grandmothers shot on the street corner. We have watched in agony day after day after day as bombs and bullets made by Germany, the United States, United Kingdom, and yes, Canada have rained death on those who wish to live. The World Food Program says the one in three Palestinian children, one in three are starving. They're famished. They're hungry. They're facing malnutrition. Without food. And while no one wants to leave home, some Gazan refugees are trying to come here to this country. And do you know how many Gazan Canadians have been approved to come to Canada? Twelve. Do you know how many have come here? Zero. In just a few moments you will hear more about this from Salim. But do you know how many Ukrainian refugees have been allowed to come here? How many visas have been given? One million. Two hundred and fifty thousand Ukrainian refugees have come here and we say welcome. We say welcome, but we ask, is this not racism? Yeah. And it's not just Palestine. The UN says that Sudan is facing one of the worst displacement crises between South Sudan and Chad. Millions are displaced and uprooted. But do you know how many Sudanese refugees are being promised, not coming, but promised to come here? 3,500. Is this not racism? Canada has imposed visas on Mexico saying that there are too many refugees coming from Mexico. And their response is, we are going to make sure that only the real tourists come and therefore not the refugees. So how do the refugees come? Is this not racism? But not all of us are left out, right? We are here. Are we here? We come here in the millions each year as international students, refugees, migrant workers. We who become undocumented. This city, Toronto, has thrown refugees out of shelters because they said there were too many of us. Delfina Nagigi died just a few weeks ago outside a shelter in Peel. The second African refugee to die in just a few months. This city will let black refugees die on the streets in winter. This city, one of the richest cities on the planet, will let us die. Is this not racism? For months, landlords and media have said that it is immigrants and migrants who are raising the rent, who are causing the housing crisis. Have you heard that? Yes. They are saying that we, who live in employer-controlled houses, 
We who live in cramped quarters, we who live without privacy and with broken furniture, we who are living five and six in a bedroom, we, not the speculators, not the landlords, not the developers, but we cause the housing crisis. Is this racism? And now, the Canadian government is listening. It's placed a cap on permanent residents. It's placed a cap on international students. It's placed a cap on study permits and on families of study permit holders. Right? Is this racism? And it's racism that is working. Tens of thousands of people in this country believe, are convinced that there are too many immigrants. So what we need to ask ourselves is this. Why do they want us to believe that? What is the purpose of all of this? They want to divide us. They want to divide us to distract us, right? Because their way of life, those at the top, the richest few, and their political collaborators, they know that if we are fighting each other, then they can keep laughing their way to the bank because united, we are unstoppable. They divide us. They divide us by race, by gender, and by immigration status. The richest few in the richest countries steal from the poorest countries, but they also steal us. They bring us here. They bring us here as stolen labor on stolen land for what? Every day we wake up as migrants from the crack of dawn. Our backs hurt. Our eyes are red. Our hands are bruised. And we get on buses, on, on bikes, and in our cars to go to work. And what do we get paid in? We get paid in insults. We get paid in abuse. We get paid in words that are sticks. And sometimes we get paid in sticks. Yeah. For what? We work hard, the bosses say work harder. Is that true? We work fast, the bosses say work faster, is that true? Yeah. We fall sick, we fall, and they keep telling us that the money that we are getting from one hand to from one boss, what are we doing with it? We're using it to pay the other boss. We take the money from one boss to then pay the landlord, the grocery store, the phone company. Yeah. Yeah. And we stare at our phones. We stare at our phones because we join birthdays and funerals on the phone. We say, I love you on the phone. We reach out to touch our phone screens. We who they call essential are also always excluded. We get no healthcare. We get no education. We get no pensions. So we pay to the system and they say that we are the ones stealing from it. Is that fair? No. Is that just? No. Is that true? No. We will not fall for this. Is that right? No. We do not accept this. Is that true? Yes. And I want us to be clear. Migrants are fighting back. Yes. In this march are hundreds, hundreds of migrants and undocumented people who are saying, though we may be undocumented, we are also unafraid. Yes. So without fear, with joy, and with courage, we are stepping into spring. We are saying we reject the separation of workers. We are uniting and we are calling for what? We are calling for status for all. What do we want? Status for all. What do we want? Status for all. Because this is the way to unite the working class. What do we want? This is the way that we are going to win together. What do we want? For all. Minister Miller promised regularization in the spring and spring. What do we want? For all. Care workers are being excluded and we are saying no because what do we want? For all. We are living in a world of war and displacement and catastrophe and we say no and our back to that is what? Status for all. What do we want? For all. What do we want? Are you going to keep fighting? Yeah. Are we united? Yeah. Do we refuse the division? Yeah. Are you willing to say to everyone, migrants did not crush the crisis, but we will make our way out of it together. What do we want? Yeah.
Toronto has been rising up to call for the end of the genocide in Gaza. And at 2.30 p.m. today, after our rally, at Bay in Front, there is a rally for Gaza, a rally to honor the resilience of Palestinian people. Because as a people, the Palestinians, we together are all resilient. Speaking to the importance of how Canada's immigration rules impact Palestinian people who are struggling for liberation and family unity, we will now hear from Salim. He was born and raised in Gaza. Salim has lost over 42 family members in the ongoing genocide, and currently one of his cousins, Dr. Saleh Alehwa, has been kidnapped since November 18th with no word from him and no help from the Canadian government. Please make some noise for Salim. I'm here to speak to you as a Palestini, a Ghazawi born and raised in Gaza. I grew up in the Shijaiya, a neighborhood known for resistance. Resistance runs through my blood. I come from the people of stones. I was taught to know that our liberation is not a dream, but a, not a matter of an if, but when. For more than a hundred years, my people have been witnessed an immense loss of land and people. Since October 7th, more than 900 families were wiped out from the civil registry, and so far, over 32,000 dead, 54 of which are my family. During this genocide, my family didn't just experience loss of life, we also have had our own abducted by the occupation forces, Dr. Saleh Halewa. On January 9th, Canada opened a temporary resident visa program that allows Palestinian Canadians to apply for their families to come here. But this program is nothing but a complicit action of this Canadian government as it requires the occupation forces to approve the families that get chosen to be saved. Not only that, they also restrict the children of siblings from applying based on age, meaning that I cannot apply for any of my family members. My family who has been displaced over six times throughout this genocide does not qualify for this program that's supposed to save Palestinian Canadians, save Palestinians from this genocide. They put a cap on the number of people that to be accepted to 1,000. Out of those 1,000, they still need to be vetted by the occupation forces. They go through invasive and extensive background checks that include providing pictures of every single scar on your body since you were 15 years old. It is time that we as people refuse to partake in the cycles of colonial oppression and exploitation. The change doesn't begin with them, it begins with us here, the people. It starts with us rejecting their propaganda, opposing their political stance, and voicing our disappointment of a government that has learned nothing from the world's history and its own history of genocide. Our voices need to be and must be higher and louder than theirs. Status for all! solidarity with Palestine. So, Viva Viva Palestina means Palestina will be free. In Gaza right now, every hospital are bombed, and health workers are suffering. Attack on hospital is injustice. We must protect our health system and reject the privatization. And now, we can hear from Ontario Nurses Association President Erin Aris. Erin Aris has been a, a critical care nurse for nearly 20 years and has been on the front lines 
of providing emergency care to many migrant workers. Please welcome to Eri. <laughs> Association has 68,000 members, nurses and healthcare professionals, and we stand in solidarity, solidarity with all of you and are here to fight with you today. Hey! I have been a frontline nurse for decades, before I was the president, and I have personally seen the impact of our government's failure to act on regularization for all undocumented people. And that's a shame! Some of the care providers that our members work alongside every day are themselves undocumented workers. And I am here today because we simply must ensure regularization for all undocumented people and permanent residence for all immigrants, as Immigration Minister Mark Miller promised he would do. Without it, thousands of racialized women would take, who take care of our children, the sick and the elderly face deportation or may be undocumented. That is a shame. So time is running out for the migrant care worker programs, which expire on June 17th. Time is running out. Time is running out, and here we are today to put emphasis on this and to fight for it. We are already seeing many workers deny permanent residency because of unfair language testing and edu education accreditation requirements. That is a shame! You know, when COVID-19 first appeared in 2020, we knew that this government was unprepared. We relied on migrant, migrant farm workers and workers in other industries at the most dangerous of times. We were willing to let them live and work in unsafe environments of shame, vulnerable to infection with a virus that we had little ability to treat or halt the spread of. ONA members, my members, the nurses and healthcare professionals of Ontario did our best in public health and hospitals to provide vaccines and treatment for those workers whenever and however we could, but we couldn't get to everyone. I was one of those nurses trying to get to everyone. Despite their bravery, these very workers continue to face deportation should they try to access health care. This is Canada. It is absolutely disgraceful that we are willing to take advantage of migrant workers for their labor and then discard them. It's a shame. Permanent resident status means access to rights. It means that workers cannot be exploited in substandard dangerous working conditions. Status also means access to service. It means access to health care, a cornerstone of Canadian values. Our Prime Minister has rightly mandated the Immigration Minister to create a fix to this untenable situation right now. Right now we have a historic opportunity to fix the inequities that leaves so many good people, so many people that are here today at risk. Why are they at risk? It is needless. There are more than two million people in Canada who need and deserve equal rights. As nurses and healthcare workers, we are here to demand that government immediately act to right this wrong. We fully endorse the proposals created by the Migrant Workers Network, Migrant Rights Network for Regularization Program. We stand in solidarity with migrant workers undocumented people, students, families, and refugees. We will not stand silently by for one more minute as people who do so much suffer. No excuses, Minister. Stop the suffering. Stop the injustice. And act now. What do we want? Healthcare for all. What do we want it? Now. Many undocumented people are suffering.
suffering because they are sick in general have health problems. They are suffering because the Ontario government took away access to health care in March 2023. Right now, our communities are having to pay thousands of dollars to give a beer, get simple life-saving medical procedures, or assisted with chronic health problems. People are dying. People's health is getting worse every day. Is this acceptable? No! Why should our communities face so many barriers to access basic health care? Everyone living or working in Ontario should have access to universal health care regardless of immigration status. This is a basic human right. We need to act now to avoid needless suffering and before more lives are lost. Please get involved in the Health Care for All campaign. We need you. Are you joining us? Are you join us? Yeah! Why do we want healthcare for all? Well, just want to give a shout out to Aaron, who is mobilizing union members and putting pressure on decision makers to keep the promises they made. If you are part of an organization, if you are part of a union, please send a letter to the Prime Minister and Immigration Minister, and let's get on this fight together. We can send more information about that. We're also going to We're going to start moving and head to Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland's office. And when we get there, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take it up a notch. Are you ready to take it up a notch? Yeah! We are not going to let them not deliver on their promises. We take it seriously when decision makers make promises that impact the lives of one point seven people in the country and this is a shared fight so don't leave we're gonna hit the streets we're gonna chant and we're gonna get in front of Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland's office and escalate because this is just the beginning this is migrant spring Canadá hace un año y diez meses. 
Soy una mujer indígena de México y una persona indocumentada. Hey, my name is Maria. I arrived in Canada two years ago, and I'm an indigenous woman from Mexico and an undocumented person. I'm a domestic worker and also do cleaning work as a documented person. I have had to live in a constant fear of being deported. I have had very bad experience at work because I have to live with a constant fear and because they believe that as a documented woman they can abuse me by offering me work for less than minimum wage. I live in a basement, sleeping in the living room. I share with three people and sometimes I can only afford to rent a bed so that they have to a place to sleep. I have had to do every every possible thing to survive so many times. If I had to work 24 hours in a row for less than minimum wage, then I had to do it. Trabajé como trabajadora doméstica en una casa cuidando a los niños y terminé haciendo todo el trabajo que los jefes querían que hiciera. Eso incluía cocinar, limpiar, cuidar de sus hijos las 24 horas del día. A cambio de eso recibí maltratos, humillaciones, insultos, racismo y discriminación. Mis jefes me decían que no sabía hacer bien el trabajo y que no servía para nada. Un día no aguanté más el maltrato y me fui de ahí con 30 dólares en la bolsa y sin, y sin tener un lugar donde vivir. Me tuve que quedar con a, algunos días con, a, con algunos amigos mientras podía. I worked uh, as a domestic worker in a, in a house taking care of two children and that included doing all the cooking, cleaning and taking care of the children 24 hours a day. In exchange for that, I received mistreatment, humiliation, insults, racism, and discrimination. My bosses told me I'm not doing my work well, and they paid me to go do anything. One day, I couldn't take this abuse anymore, and I left the house with $30 in my bag and without having a place to live. Estoy aquí porque quiero que la gente escuche mi historia y sepa que, que muchos inmigrantes, que sepa lo que muchos inmigrantes vivimos cuando llegamos, mucho más personas indocumentadas. Hoy tengo el valor de decirle aquí enfrente de ustedes porque quiero que eso, eso cambie para mí y para cientos más, porque quiero volver a ver a mi familia pronto, a mis hijas, a mi nieto y a mi esposo. my story, I know what many new immigrants and not documented have to suffer through when they come to this country. Today, I had the courage to say it here in front of you because I want that to change for me and for hundreds for others. Because I hope to see my family soon, my daughter and my husband, my grandson. Porque tengo la esperanza que el ministro Trudeau cumpla su promesa y cambie mi vida y la de miles de personas. Porque merecemos los mismos derechos que los demás. Necesitamos una vida, vivir una vida sin miedo a ser deportados. Necesitamos y merecemos estatus ahora. Estatus para todos. and thousands of others by creating a regularization program. I'm here to ask the Prime Minister to regularize me and other hundreds of all documented people because we deserve the same rights as others. We need to live a life of, of fear, obeying the portal. We need and we deserve a status now. <laughs> today 
from allied, labor, uh, allied supporters in labor about this shared fight. And so together, before we end today, we're going to take out our phones and all send an email right now to Prime Minister Trudeau and Immigration Minister Mark Miller to say, this is Migrant Spring, they must deliver on their promises. So everyone, please take out your phone. If you have a flyer, there's a QR code, you can scan it. Please take out your phone and go to statusforall.ca and send an email right now. Right now, as we're in front of Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland's office, let's hundreds of us flood the inboxes. Todos tenemos con nosotros un flyer que se nos ha entregado. Por favor, escaneen el código y vamos a mandar un email para pedir que regularicen a todas las personas sin documentos. Ya escuchamos con María todo lo que vienen a pasar a este país. Por favor, en este momento tratemos de mandar ese email. You go to statusforall.ca. If that's not working for you, go to migrantrights.ca. You'll see a button. It says add your name. The email is already there. All you have to do is add your name and it'll send an email to Prime Minister Trudeau, Immigration Minister Miller, and their cabinet colleagues who will be making a decision very soon. And as we do that, we're gonna give you a couple minutes, then we're going to end today with a chant so that they know that we will continue fighting, that we will not stop. You're not gonna stop, right? <laughs> sent their emails so let's as the rest of us send our emails do some chance no justice no peace no justice no peace